Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on double plants. Uh, last week I basically uh, opened a poll for uh, if you guys wanted to see double plants or super tools uh, and you guys wanted to see double plants. So I'm going to be showing you the mechanics and all that stuff uh, behind the particular thing and I also added a little bit of extra stuff because I noticed some things in 1.15 that were actually uh, introduced uh, with double plants. So with that being said, uh, let's look at this cluster here first. Uh, this was naturally generated and uh, because the way that we have, basically the way I have it set up is uh, it will generate a structure of these two blocks um, only and I've used a structure block just to copy these two blocks I've imported it and then I've used a structure uh, structure spawn to basically uh, generate them in a cluster up to eight I believe and you can change the rarity as you can see they're pretty common throughout the world which uh, might be a little bit too common but you can adjust the how much might spawn and that will allow it to basically uh, lower the amount. So if we uh, break the bottom block, it will remove the top block and give us the uh, bottom block uh, which has a custom icon. If we place it, it places the top one. If we break the top, it will give us the item again. So if we go over to the um, little thing that I have set up over here, a little greenhouse type thing, uh, we can just sit here and watch some bees. Um, you can actually see the bees at work right now. Uh, they are, we kind of go over here, they're getting pollen from the top of the plant and then they're going to bring it back to the actual um, hive which is right in the center there as you can see there. So uh, I'll show you the mechanics of that too. That's actually really easy to set up. So let's hop into mCreator and I'll show you how it all works. So first things first, you're going to need uh, your top and bottom block. So when you create that, you want to add your bottom block texture. And then the other important thing is that um, use the cross model. So I did use the cross model. And then you want to add a item, which you're going to need an item, the same texture as your top texture for your item. You can also change that however you want if you wanted to but you do need an item texture for this to work and that's basically just making it look a little bit prettier than the bottom base of the block uh, and the last thing that you need to do is make it sure it's on cutout and then you're ready to move on um, you're gonna want to give it a GUI name put it under material plants and the block sound should be plants as well uh, you can put it under any creative tab you want, uh, but the hardness and resistance should be zero. Uh, with that being said, you want to walk through the block because that's how double plants usually operate, so you want to check that box. Uh, for the custom drop, you just leave this particular one uh, to drop itself, that's fine. And then for the tool able to destroy it, I have not specified it because you're most likely going to be breaking it with your hand and then just set this to zero so you can actually break it with your hand. Moving on to advanced properties, I have the update uh, or tick rate set to one. I have also changed the map on color to foliage and I believe that's all that I have down here. Uh, one thing that I have done is made this to be able to destroy. So this is for the when the piston basically pushes the block, it will destroy the block. Um, I didn't add particles and it doesn't have NBT data, nor does it have energy. We'll get into triggers in just a second, but uh, there was only three triggers and generation, we did not set that up. So let's move over to the top part and uh, you want to set your top texture right here. You want to set it across model. Um, you also want it to be cut out and um, you do not want a actual icon for this particular block because it's not going to be used. And then what you want to do is give it a GUI name, put it under plants and for material, uh, block sound should be plant and it should not be under a creative inventory. Uh, it also should be zero, zero for 
hardness and resistance and uh, you want it to be able to walk through. Uh, the block that it should drop is the pink string. This is just to be just just to ensure that it will um, basically um, have a option to if it needs to drop something, then it will drop something. Uh, you can disable this. It is disabled technically with uh, zero drops, but just to be safe. Uh, for the creative pick item, you want to select the bottom texture. Uh, for the tool able to destroy, it, uh, I have not specified it, and I've set the, the uh, harvest level to zero. Moving to advanced properties, I have also the tick rate set to one. Uh, foliage for the map color and the block is also will react to being destroyed um, when it's being pushed. So with that moving on, no tile entity information, no uh, particular uh, energy or uh, yeah that's that's about it. So the only other thing that we need to cover is the procedures and uh, this particular one only has two it has um, when dis when block destroyed by player and what this basically does is it tests it for what block it currently is so what it's doing here is it's testing for if the block below or block above is um, equal to the uh, pink string top which is our top model now this will run if from both blocks so we're testing this from the top one so this won't be true because it doesn't stack like that so if it does actually be placed then it will um, test uh, for the next option which is if it's one block below and then our base model then it's going to remove the block with a drop so this one will automatically get cancelled out uh, because there won't be a uh, pink top block of the um, flower uh, above it. So that's how it basically works. This will get cancelled out at first and because it's testing for above and this will run after it because it, this is, is not true. And uh, yeah, and then it'll just drop the um, custom drop for the bottom of the block with the 0, 0.0 or 0 0.5 uh, coordinates which is the center of the block. So that's basically the dropping mechanics for the player and uh, same thing over at the um, when destroyed by explosion. So it's actually the exact same procedure. So that's for that one, and for this one, it's a little bit different. Triggers, and then we go to when block added. So because this block is actually also being added, uh, because it's our base model, what we want to do is actually test for three things. Now, without this first condition right here, uh, testing for the block above, equal to the top block this will always run for some reason i'm not sure why it just does so uh to basically break that cycle i added a um a little catch right here which basically just uh tests for the top block as well as if there's air and cave air and if that's true then it's going to place the top block which will technically work it works fine because this is always um, going to be false mostly because there shouldn't be anything there anyways for that top block So it'll always be testing for error. It's just it when it places down the top block. I guess there's some particular trigger that um, Doesn't run the full condition right here. So it needed to have that extra thing. So and If it's not there, then it's just basically going to uh, remove this actually should be 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 I just copied it from up here so basically what that's going to do is um, drop the item or block uh, of the current block being placed at the center coordinates of where it currently is and then we're using the same uh, block for detecting if there is um, 
a block removed above. So this is the same procedure for when it's destroyed for player and um, for the um, explosion. So that's all there is for the procedures. I did mention that I did tweak some stuff for the uh, bees to work and uh, I did add a tag called uh, tall flowers and this is the tag right here it's uh, tall underscore flowers and it's under the minecraft namespace and the type of block or tag type is blocks and then you want to add your top block to this particular tag and what that will do is it will um, get the bees to uh, register it as a uh, block that will basically can they can co collect pollen from and bring it back to their hive so the only other thing that I need to cover is the structure itself now I'll hop back in game quickly to show you what I did for creating the structure and then I will uh, hop back uh, here and show you uh, what we need to set up for the structure uh, one thing that I should note, um, I've been noticing a couple things happening with the top block. Uh, this happens when something is changed in the procedures or something gets compiled. I don't know what's causing it, but uh, sometimes the top block will get a untextured um, uh, texture, the pink and purple texture. So what that is basically doing is just saying something isn't compiled properly. If you want to regenerate the code, that usually fixes it. Uh, just to be on a safe precaution, I usually um, go into the top block and then compile it manually, and then I recompile, and then it fixes the uh, top texture from not having a texture. I'm not sure what causes it, but since I was just messing around with the uh, procedures and stuff like that, I have probably an idea that it has something to do with the procedures getting uh, compiled so just a small tip for you guys so with that being said um, we need to create our structure so I'm going to plop out this block right here I'm going to actually change the mode to save I'm going to set the coordinates to plus one plus one plus one and then I'm going to set this to one two and one and then we're gonna set save. And now you can see the hitbox is right here. What you wanna do now is just place your structure right inside that block. And that will detect the structure itself that we want to basically copy. And then you wanna give it a name, um, something like double plant, um, and then maybe the plant name. So pink string and hit save and then it will be saved to your minecraft world so uh with that being said let's hop over to m creator if you go to your resources and then you go to your structures and then you can import from minecraft and then there should be your structure that you just saved giving that you still have the world in your world folder so if you don't have your world in your world folder and you just deleted it, then it won't be there, obviously. So you can import that and then you have your structure uh, for the next step. So for the structure, you want to create a structure spawn and then you want to select your structure type. Uh, this basically controls how um, common they are. I have it at uh, 500. It's a little bit too common, I would say. Um, you can lower the number to maybe 100 or whatever. It might be a little bit more uh, easier to find. Or not easier, but like, you know, spaced out more uh, reasonable. And then below that, uh, we have the structure group size, uh, which basically has a minimum and maximum. So the minimum group size is set to 1, where the maximum is set to 8. This will spawn them in the clusters up to 8 blocks. Uh, randomized rotation we don't need to do that because it doesn't have a rotation unless your block does have a rotation and then you might want to set that up I guess um, uh, blocks to ignore I just have structure blocks that's fine uh, type of reference a ground direction I have it uh, first motion blocking block so the last thing is spawn location. I have it set to ground and the spawn offset height. Now you might have to play around with this depending on 
your model, it might spawn it in the ground. If that's the case, then you want to add this to plus one. If uh, it's perfectly spawning on top of the grass, then you can just leave it at zero. Setting the world type is basically the dimension that you want it to generate in. So if you want it to generate in just the surface, you can do that. If you don't want it to spawn in the surface, but say uh, the nether, then you can select the nether, or if you want it in both of them uh, or any other worlds, including custom dimensions, and you can set it how you want. Uh, for this, I just have it under surface. Uh, the next thing that you wanna do is restrict to block type. Now this is important because we want it to only spawn on grass blocks. So when you set this up, you want to set the grass block and then you're good. Now there is one last thing that we are doing and that is a additional condition or additional generation condition. I covered this in a previous tutorial for procedures. If you wanna go watch that, I'll make sure to link to the video below. Um, what I'm doing for the spawning conditions though is I'm testing if there's a grass block in the current block location where it's going to be generating from. And then what I'm going to be doing is testing if there is an air block, one block above the grass block and another block, two blocks above the grass block where the block will be spawning from. If that's true, then I'm returning true. If it's false, then it's just gonna return false. So that's all there is to it. Uh, there is no additional pages or anything like that. So hopefully you guys found this video uh, useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.